first of all, I want to say thank you um, for joining in. I know you guys keep a busy schedule, so thank you for taking some time out of the day to hop on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. One thing that's, you know, why I wanted to do this is because, you know, being immersed in basketball and looking around, you watch podcasts, you watch different interviews. Uh, very rarely do you see the perspective of the mother. You know, you get to hear what the experience was like for the mom uh, coming through the basketball world. So that's why it was important for me to have you on and to kind of talk about, talk to you about, you know, that experience and what you guys have gone through. Well, um, everything starts and ends with us mothers. So, yeah, you, you know, I, I don't understand how we get left out, but. Um, <laughs> it's like that um, sometimes. I don't know why either, but it's like that sometimes. Well, anybody that knows me and knows Namari knows that I'm always present. And I, I, I'm I, not ashamed to say I am that mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Which is why I called you and asked you to hop on. You're the first mom. You're the first woman. You're the first entrepreneur that we've had on the platform. So, you know, let's, let's, let's get to it. You know, I want to talk about a lot of things. So I'm going to jump around a bit because I definitely want to hit on basketball and talk basketball, obviously, but also... Uh, being a course time mom, entrepreneurship, social media. So uh, we can get this thing rolling if that's cool with you. Sure. Nice. So so I think what, what's a good starting point uh, is if we start at the end. The last time I saw you guys, we were in Kentucky. Uh, mm -hmm. You all had just won a championship. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, you all won a, a championship. And then that same weekend, uh, the pandemic hit. And I feel like life hasn't been the same. Uh, since that weekend for any of us. Can you talk just a little bit about leaving that weekend and kind of how things have happened since then? Well, the day of the game, I went in Amari's room and I said, you're not playing today. And he said, wow. what do you mean? And that was the day that everything came out. The NBA was canceled. You know, all of these players were testing positive. And mm -hmm. at the beginning, I was very nervous. So I was like, you ain't playing. He was like, come on, Ma. You know, so... Yeah. Um, I had to allow him to be the young man that he is growing to be, and yeah. I allow him to play. And let's not forget that I think it was a 37 38 point performance. Let's not forget that he balled out, no question. <laughs> he, he balled out, MVP of the of the championship game, you know, yeah. Yeah. um, finishing what he started back yeah. in Chicago at Morgan Park. Um, but everything has changed. Um, one thing I must say that has remained the same with Namari is his work ethic. Mm. You know, even though the gyms in California had closed down, yeah. um, you know, his trainer, John, they were still making a way, you know, to work out. And it was very important that he stayed in the gym. Mm. So um, it did hit us because things change. But as far as his work ethic, it never changed. It pretty much kind of stayed the same or probably um, he probably did even more than what he did previously. Yeah, he's definitely one of the hardest workers in the game. And, you know, there's a lot of things I like about his game, but his work ethic and his energy, you know, that's that's one of the things that, you know, definitely stood out and I like most about him. With with all the basketball that you all played in, countless games, I'm sure, countless gyms, what's your favorite uh, Namari basketball moment where you was in, you were in the stands, you were like, yo, that's my son. My son just did that. What, what was that moment? Okay, so Namari's played AAU since technically first grade. Nice. So I'm going to start with the first um, memorable moment. He was probably four years old, and we played in this, um, in this little league in Blue Island, Illinois. And back then, you know, I made sure he was always dressed to play and yes. ready to play. So he was real big at, at that age, real big on shooting threes and – me and his dad was like, stop shooting these threes. But that was always one of his strong points. And I remember um, one of the games he won. And, and this, is, this is very important for other basketball moms and parents to, to know is that when your kid is good, when your kid has talent and they stand out, the hate is going to come. Mm -hmm. So I was brought into the hate of in the basketball world early on and they was hating on this little four-year-old with the headband <laughs> with an earring in his ear they hating at four that's how they at four yeah. i swear but he was when i say you, you would be like is he really gonna shoot that and it would go in 
that was probably one of my mo most memorable early on the Murray moments um, when he won the game and he had a few threes. And, you know, the parents was just like upset that yeah. he was who he was. But, hey, it never stopped. His talent never stopped. The hate never stopped. That just comes with a part of success, just being an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Um, the second most memorable moment was um, probably... I want to say sixth or seventh grade when um, Namari was just off that game. And this was like a city championship qualifying game. My husband knows the game exactly, but I remember everything that he was just shooting just wasn't going in. Mm. But I, I never panicked. My, um, I like to say never panic, just pray. Yeah. And it came to the end, like it was like a buzzer beater and one of his teammates stole the ball and passed it to Namari, and Namari shot the ball and won the game. Knocked down. So you already know where this is going. Yeah. That game in Phoenix. Yeah. When we played, what was it, Dream City? Dream City Dream in, in Arizona. My favorite, my favorite Namari basketball moment. That is my favorite Namari basketball moment. Yeah. Um, those kids were playing real rough. It was a hostile environment. Um, it was a very hostile environment. I was ready to get on the floor. <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> I got friends and family. We was deep too. We was ready. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> y'all stay. Y'all stay deep. Y'all stay deep. <laughs> but um, when that boy missed the free throw, and somehow, yeah. some way, that ball got in Amari hands, and he hit that half court pass, half court buzzer yeah. beater. That was um, one of my most memorable high school moments for Namari. Yeah, sitting there, you know, sitting mid-court. I think my guy B was a couple seats down from me. Mm -hmm. And it was just like the, the talk, the back and forth. The game was just crazy. It was packed. And I think it was the first. It was actually the first grind session event. So it was already energy because people, you know, not, yep. not the first one that I saw. It was very early on. But for the game to be that close, that back and forth, and for the ball, like you said, to fall in his hands and right there at half to let it go. And I, I think he knew it was good when he let it go. I, I think really he did. Because he ran with it. You know, you let it go, and he, he ran did. with it in excitement. Like, oh, that's going in. He already knew what time it was. So Yeah, that, that, was, was, um, that was a different feeling. I can't even explain that feeling. But Namari has always been a winner. Um, yeah. That's one thing Coach Beard always says about him just watching film from his high school days, he's a winner. He's yeah. very unselfish. You know, a lot of our, a lot of parents that need to teach their kids to be unselfish, you know? Mm. Yeah, you got to score. Yeah, you got to get on the board. You got to make, make yourself relevant, but you also have to share the ball and be a team player. And that's one thing Namari has always been very good at. Yeah, and, he, and I think another thing to piggyback on that is like he doesn't, <clears throat> he doesn't shy away from the moment, excuse me. Like, I, I think when I look at players and, I, I, you know, you try to determine, like, what makes a player special, I think when you look at that last 10 seconds, that last five, that last five seconds, are they looking to pass or are they looking to take on, you know, the challenge for themselves? And he, he didn't hesitate, you nope. know, and I've seen him make several big shots like that where he didn't hesitate. It was like, I can do this, and he's confident in himself. Uh, so I, I think that's 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 going to help him, obviously, for the long run. You, you spoke briefly about um, Morgan Park. You know, um, being from Atlanta, you always hear about what cities are toughest when it comes to basketball. Mm -hmm. Just speak a little bit on what's what's it like coming through Chicago, you know, and trying to make a name for yourself in Chicago, where we know so many countless pros have come through Chicago. It's such a tough environment for basketball. What was that like? Um, well, Chicago is is exactly that. It's a tough um, place to grow up. Yeah. Um, you have to get in where you fit in, and um, basketball is no different from that. Um, I was just DMing another basketball mom today, mm. and she was telling me that her, ski, her kid attended a certain school. And I said, well, you do know that the top basketball schools in Chicago is Morgan Park, Simeon, Whitney mm -hmm. Young, um, Curie or and I'm missing another one but um, it definitely wasn't easy but Namari he, he somewhat followed the footsteps of Derrick Rose he mm. attended Beasley Elementary School so before Morgan Park even happened we put him in Beasley um, which is on 52nd and State Street and it's right down the street from me and my husband where we were raised 
Right. So um, it's in the hood, pretty much. And Namari um, has been fortunate not to be raised, you know, in the hood. So that school was a different dynamic for him. But we knew early on, in order to be what he is becoming to be now, you have to be, you got to be thrown in the fire. You got to know how um, to relate. You got to, you got to get in where where the real basketball is ball, balls at. And that's what he did at and um, Beasley. So he made a name for himself early on. Went in, I want to say, three state championships. Sheesh. Um, city championships, not state. Yeah. Um, city championships. So early on, we was about that hoop life. Back then, that was my brand. Um, that all started from him. Um, mm. And then after Beasley, once he graduated, um, back then we had the show, Bringing Up Ballers, and I did a press conference, which a lot of people thought was extra, but... <laughs> I am who I am, <laughs> unapologetically. <laughs> you're locked in. You're locked in early. I was locked in early because I saw it. Like Namari mm -hmm. is, and has always been um, a basketball junkie. Like that's his life from one years old up until now. Mm -hmm. You can tell that like he eats, breathes, and everything else when it comes to basketball. So we uh, we made the decision. We did a press conference announcing that he was going to Morgan Park. Um, and even before he started going to Morgan Park, I always tell a story. I know that you know the kid Charlie Moore from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Charlie Moore was a senior, and Namari was in eighth grade. And my mm -hmm. husband took him up to Morgan Park to play. And I don't know what Charlie did. He bowled my baby. He did something. <laughs> but Namari was all bruised up, and he come home, and he all hurting and I'm like what's going on <laughs> so again my husband always was like you know he gotta he gotta get better he gotta get tougher yeah. he's always yeah. played up for you moms and dads that's watching you got mm. kids coming up in AAU it's very important that they play up especially mm. um, if they're bigger Namari has always been taller yeah. um, than his you know his age group so we always had him play up but anyway he went to Morgan Park and he played against Charlie Moore come home all bruised up I'm like, don't take him back up there. He ain't ready for that. In a dog fight. <laughs> a total dog fight. But a few days later, swelling went down. He told his dad, I'm ready to go back up there. And he went back up there and, and he went, you know, head to head, toe to toe with, with Charlie. And he did good. So um, Morgan Park was definitely a great experience for him. Um, he was the sixth man coming off the bench. Um, he won this state championship ring here in his freshman year. Please. I wear it proudly. Yeah. And he got he, rings, um, rings on rings. Huh? I said he got rings on rings. Win all kinds <laughs> of championships. He got rings on rings. And yeah. it's more it's more to come because again, it's the winner in him. Yeah. And another Namari moment was at the state championship game and they played Fenwick, which is another good um Chicago basketball school I forgot to mention. They're right outside of Chicago. But mm -hmm. they um they won that state championship game. Namari broke a record with hitting six threes. They went into double overtime and Crazy. and and they won. And he was a big part of that. Him and Marcus Watson, um, that is formerly of uh, Morgan Park. Yeah, Marcus a Hooper too. I'm familiar yeah. with Marcus as well. And, and that's uh, that's a good thing you you mentioned that because I was going to ask when and parents ask it all the time. You know, we see players being ranked at 12 and 13 years old. And people are saying, like, hey, I can identify a player, you know, at that level or at that age. At what age did you see that my son is going to be a five-star, one of the best kids in the country? What what age did you see that? Um, I would say more of a grade. I would say maybe like third grade. Really? Mm -hmm. and the wow. reason And the reason for that is, um, you know my husband, he a basketball junkie too. Basketball, 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 basketball. Absolutely. I'm I'm the last few years I'm really like buying into it because it was like, can we talk about something else? Can we do something else? But when it's your life and it's taking you so many places that it has taken us, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, but third grade is when we were doing like different basketball camps. Mm. And one of the leading programs back then was WACG, we all can go. Mm, and yeah. they were um, a basketball team or a program, I should say, out of Tennessee. And they saw Namari play at mm. a tournament. And they were like, well, can he come play with us? And I'm thinking, okay, this kid is getting recruited at third grade. Third so, grade. 
grade. Third grade. So I knew that it was something special about him then um, because now he wasn't just competing in Chicago or the Midwest. He was competing everywhere. We went to nationals every year. Mm -hmm. And when you compete, which is very important, when you compete and play against the best, that's when you become the best. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think, you know, kind of fast forward and talking about recruiting, you all were able to have schools across the country you know, wanting Namari to come to their school, which is a crazy experience and had to be really cool. What is it like, you know, going to Texas Tech and going to Alabama and Michigan, Oregon, and walking around the campuses and having the coaches basically pitch you and, and really want you to come to their school where, when it's so hard to get in these schools. It's so much money. We know what it's like to, to go from, try to go to college from where, where we're from. Like, what was that like to have that experience and to walk around those campuses and, and, and to go through that? It was a hell of an experience, especially because I didn't experience college, you know, coming from the inner city of Chicago. I went to like a local college, didn't finish. Um, so I was seeing my dreams unfold right in front of me I through bet. my son. Mm -hmm. And even before we did the four official visits at Oregon um, Tech Michigan and um, Alabama, we went on an unofficial visit at Stanford his sophomore year. Wow. So I was like, oh my God, Stanford. Like <laughs> That campus is crazy too. <laughs> my husband was like, calm down, calm down. It's too early. But I was so excited because it's like, who, how many black people get a chance to experience? You know what I'm saying? So um, it, was, it was just an amazing experience, you know, to see how, how how much they bought into Namari, how much they believed in him. And obviously we picked Tech because it was the best place for him. Um, you know, all of the other coaches on the official visits were great. The campuses were great. Alabama campus was amazing. Um, but it was something about Tech and Coach Beard. And it was just like, it's a fit. When it's a fit, you know it. And he knew it. He knew it on the visit. And, um, you know, we made the best decision for him. I should say he made the, the best decision but collectively as a parent, because we are very hands-on, we talked about it, we discussed it, and um, we're very happy and, and looking forward to what's next. Yeah, so so that part of it wasn't hard. I know just remembering myself going through the recruiting process, me and my mom, like you and Amari, we were best friends. You know, that was my homie. We never got into it, but when it came to recruiting, I was thinking, kicking it, partying, and she was education and what's going to set you up for the best path. And we butt, you know, we butted heads. And, and at that time, I feel like all the decisions are internal, like everything's happening in-house. You know, there wasn't that kind of like a, a back and forth. It was just pretty much smooth when it came to making the decision on which program to choose. It was. It wasn't hard at all. Um, we, we have a very um, long history and relationship with Jawan Howard. Um, mm -hmm. But Michigan was in the fit for different reasons. Oregon, um, I'm not going to mention which school, but Alabama was, all the visits were great. Let me say that. Yeah. But yeah. there was a visit where we went and some of the players didn't even acknowledge or speak to him. Wow. So I'm real big on that. You know, Mama Bear, I, and I speak my mind. I'm a Libra. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have no problem telling how I feel. So yeah. when he mentioned that one of the kids didn't speak to him, I was like, okay, we're not coming into a situation where they're not open because mm. unfortunately they're not feeling like you can help us. They're feeling like they're intimidated by what you can bring. And, yeah. and now that, that turns into competition and ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> so when it came to the decision, he kind of felt the vibe as to the players and who welcomed mm. him um, and the atmosphere. And in Texas, it was just, one thing that stood out about Texas Tech was that it's a basketball school. Yeah, for sure. All the other schools we named are football schools. Yeah. So that set us um, apart, and the decision wasn't hard at all. That's something I think about a lot. You know, when you're looking at schools and, and making a decision, is a basketball school versus a football school. I think that's a great point that you mentioned of kind of looking at the vibe of the other players that are on the campus. What's one or two other things that for the parents that are, you know, really about to start this process of going to different campuses, 
is there anything else that you saw during that process that might be helpful for them to kind of think about as they're walking around these campuses? And it's so nice. You know, it's easy to get caught up in the shiny, you know, facilities and, and eating and everything else, you know, but what, oh, are yeah. there any things that could, you know, that might be helpful for a parent as they walk around that campus to kind of think about? Um, I'm looking at the comments here. And um, as Manny just said, Coach Beer produces first round draft picks. Yeah. We're going to the league out of there. That makes sense. One in two years. So Thank you, Manny. That's a good one. Thanks, Manny. That's <laughs> not really. Um, so you had the other coaches that were kind of new, and then you had another coach that was kind of like older and produced pros, but, you know, three, four years down the line. Mm. Uh, that was one thing. But another thing, too, was the living um, living facilities. Yeah, and some of those schools, it was, you know, Mari was like, <laughs> I, I was like, he's six four. How's he going to sleep in his bed? <laughs> yeah. All campuses are not created equal. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So the, the living experience, um, I wouldn't say that that was like a, a, a turning point, but it was important. But mm. I paid attention to the academics and how the, how they did everything. So one thing with tech, you have an option to do online, which everything is probably going to be online now. Excellent. But you, you have a chance to like mix and match how many classes you want to actually attend and being, you know, mm -hmm. online. That way you can stay in the gym and you can work out two, three times. That's like really, really important when you're trying to get somewhere. Absolutely. Um, so I would, I would tell parents to t pay a close attention to how the um, tutors work. Mm -hmm. um, and how the whole education process runs when it comes to classes in person and online. Absolutely. I think those are all valid and, and are, are helpful points. And I saw someone else say, like, post this after. You know, again, kind of going back to it, these are the things if you're – and my mom, she had no clue of the process. She had no clue about anything. And that I think these are the things that are important. So thank you. I think those are all great tips. Uh, kind of a quick a quick shift. I wanted to hit quickly on social media. I think you do a great job on social media. Uh, and that's another thing that I think is something that the athletes are going through. You know, I look at them and I call it a digital athlete, you know, players that are coming up in this digital age where social media is such a big deal. Any tips and tricks for navigating social media for parents that might be like yourself building a brand and building a business and then also um, with 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 the players you said you held a press conference you know those are things that you were ahead of the game because at that time there was no instagram there was no you know any of that so you were you were thinking ahead but now those are the things that people do you know and it's nothing to create a live and to hold a pre your own press conference so a anything you can think of on the social media side that might be helpful yeah two things when it comes to your personal page as a mother as a parent um there's no one that's going to believe in your child like you do so I don't care what type of line of work you're in um, or you're one of those parents, you know, you have a lot of people that say, I don't post. Post your kid, promote your kid. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how some of the um, prep schools got a hold of who Namari was back in sixth and seventh grade because we had mm -hmm. Facebook back, back then. Yeah. I was always posting. I probably posted more of him then than I do now. But yeah. as a parent, it's important that you promote your kid as well. You never know who's watching. This is a free platform with millions and billions of people um, that can see what your kid is doing. And most importantly, when it comes to like Namari's page, your kid page, you gotta, they have to keep their page clean. They can't be on there going live cursing. And my kid ain't like that. Gratefully, he's, he's not that type of kid. But some of these other kids, it's like, you know, you, you can't afford to make a mistake. Now you just being a kid, don't get me wrong. We were all teenagers. But you can't afford to be, um, again, cursing or just doing too much because when these teens invest in you, they don't want to invest in someone that's going to be going on social media and ranting and raving and, and just acting a plum fool. Yeah. So it's important, parents, to um, – I don't have to navigate Namari's page because I have to tell him to post. He's just super laid back and cool where yeah. – um, he doesn't post, but for the, the kids that do post a lot, you kind of want to manage their content, kind of talk up, talk to them about what they should be posting, um, especially with going live and doing those things, because one simple mistake, one dumb comment can cost them in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope all the players, and actually, you know, obviously I'm going to post this after. I hope all the players can 
you know, listen to that advice because a lot of times you don't know. And I'm so glad, you know, when we were coming up and going through high school and college that everything wasn't recorded and available. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I hope to try to you know, let them know and to try to educate them on the power of social media and the good side of it, but also, you know, the things that could really mess up their career and, 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 and create a lot of negativity for them. And, and kind of on that, you know, I saw that you all had uh, taken part in a peaceful protest and, um, you know, when I look at players today, the amount of awareness from high school players of just kind of what's happening from the, you know, politically, the environment, it's like they're so tapped into everything. What what was that like going through that? And, you know, what made you all want to get out and do a peaceful protest? And because you didn't have to do that, you know, what, what made you all make that decision? Um, it was a team thing with Texas Tech and... Um, mm -hmm. You know, the whole George Floyd thing brought a lot of awareness to not just mothers, but to the world. Mm -hmm. um, like his daughter said, daddy changed the world, and he definitely did. So Namari got a call and said, Ma, we're going to protest. And I said, well, you know I'm going with you. <laughs> <laughs> and when we got out there, it was so crazy because, of course, we've heard of uh, the Breonna Taylors and the Tamir Rices and you know, so many other countless black people, girls and boys that have lost their lives. Mm -hmm. But the pastor that lay at the protest, he mentioned like 75 names that we had never heard of. Crazy. So that like, that made, that made me feel some type of way to know that it's so many more countless names. You know, it's constantly a, a new name every week, something that they're reporting now that we, know not, we knew nothing about. And it was important for us to, to get out there um, to show our support. And one thing about Namari, sometimes I have to tell him, you should post this, you should post that. And he woke up the next morning and he posted the picture and I didn't tell him to do it. And he just spoke from the heart about how he felt because we have been fortunate. We have, um, we've met a lot of white people that are not racist, especially being in Napa, you know, living yeah. in the Bay Area. Um, yeah. So not every white person is racist, but we have to, um, we have to, if you have a voice, if you have a platform, if you're a human being, you have to speak on what's right. And we know Black Lives Matters. And we just have to make sure that our kids are using their platform to make it known to their peers. Like, just because things have died down, we can't stop talking about it. Like, we have to continuously, you know, push for change. And, and that's what Namari has been doing since the protest quietly. He doesn't do, you know, he, he's not one of them players that live for the limelight. Like he's not. Yeah. yeah. And that's gonna take him that's gonna take him real far because he doesn't have to have that. He's gonna still improve in other ways. Yeah, and I, I actually wasn't aware that that was a Texas Tech thing. Shout out Texas Tech. You mm -hmm. know, that's big to and part of the reason, you know, with, with your decision making on what school to go to, I think that's really cool that they you know, set that up, but, you know, big for you all to go out there and then, like you said, to post about it because it does help. It does create more awareness and it might encourage somebody else who might not have gotten up and went out. Say, if I saw Namari, obviously he's a leader, you know, other people that are coming up want to be like him. So I, I think that's really cool. Uh, before I let you go, I think too, as an entrepreneur and building a business, I know how difficult it is. It's probably one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing that I've done. Uh, you're doing it, you're building a business, and you're raising a son that's a high profile, you know, basketball player. What, what, what is it like? Like, how do you find the balance on, because I've seen you all in Colorado, I've seen you all in Kentucky, Chicago, countless cities, you all are traveling around the country and, and making sure your son is put in the best position, but you're also at the same time, uh, building a business as a black woman, like, what is that like trying to you know, try to do that and finding the balance there? Um, you definitely have to <clears throat> find balance, but it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to be successful. Um, it's a sacrifice to help your kids reach their goals. And mm. these last few years with Namari, um, with us moving from Chicago to California, um, I had to kind of put some of my things that I was working on on the back burner because that's when he needed me full time traveling and Unlike some other parents, no shade, but I ain't sending my kid nowhere by himself. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody going to take, ain't, ain't nobody going to look after you like your mama. Ain't nobody yeah. going to take care of you like your mama. Yeah. And that's another thing, parents. Prep schools are definitely preparing your kids for the next level. 
-hmm. if you have the means, if you have the way, you, you may want to move close by. You may want because they need that support, not mm -hmm. only um, mentally, but physically. Namari, as you know, basketball players, they always banged up. You know, they need the Epsom salt baths. Yeah. They need the CBD cream rubbed on them. They need that mom and dad full support because it becomes mental when they lost the game or something is bothering them or they have an issue with the team, teammates or the coaches. Um, with success comes a lot of hate. You have to be ready for that. You have to know how to, you know, brush it off your shoulders, keep it moving. And you have to really know how to um, see it when it comes. So I... I point that out a lot to Namari. I'll say, did you see what he said? Or did you see? And he had sometimes say, Ma, you crazy. And I tell him all the time, like my grandma used to tell me, that ain't your friend. <laughs> she used to always say that. And I used to think, damn, am I ever going to have any friends? <laughs> but, but mom knows best. And, you know, as a parent, you're going to protect your kids. So um, back to just the overall picture of entrepreneurship, you just got to keep going. You know, playing basketball, you get hurt. You wake up, play another day. Sometimes I'll tell him, you should take a break. He's like, I can't take a break. And he's right. Because in order to get better, you got to keep on getting better. Because while you're not working or taking a break, somebody else is working harder than you. Somebody out there working. Yeah. So um, as for my parents out there, I would say support is number one when it comes to helping your kids get to you know the next level. Um, and then in business, you need a good support team. You need a you need a real team. And I've been through quite a few teams in my, you know, 10, 12 years just being an entrepreneur with various businesses I've had. And um, you got to weed the you got to weed the people out that's not meant to be, and keep the ones that that's going to be um, long term. Absolutely, you know, I salute you all for what you're doing. Like I said, the business that you're building. Uh, definitely going to be keeping an eye out on it and watching what you guys are building there, but then also supporting Namari and, you know, good luck this season. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to come on. Again, I think your words and, the, you know, what you said is going to be powerful and it's going to help someone. So I appreciate it. Can you just share where, where people can follow you and, and what you're working on so, so people know? Absolutely. You can follow me at she, S-H-E, Nikki, N-I-K-K-I-B, she, Nikki B., also, you can follow me on the Courtside Moms. Um, that is a, a business that I have with Kyrie Walker's mom. Um, mm -hmm. If you know basketball, you know Kyrie. Um, so that's our business. Got to know Kyrie. <laughs> Got to know Kyrie. Yeah, yeah. so um, we're working on a few um, things that are, that's coming very, very soon. The pandemic kind of slowed a little things, a lot of things down, just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But we're still staying diligent. And also, I have an ebook that will be dropping in October called the Basketball Mom Blueprint. Nice, nice. So I'm giving some, um, a lot of valuable information and a lot of the experience that we've had over the years to help other moms like me navigate this whole basketball world and mm -hmm. kind of get an idea of where your kids should be. Um, and last but not least, for all the moms and dads out there, if your kid is, if you feel that your kid is good, because everybody feel like their kid is good. Everybody kid going to the league. Everybody kid going to the NBA. <laughs> However, if you have a kid that you feel is good and they're not playing on a major AAU circuit, if they're not playing on Nike, Adidas, or Under Armour, and they playing in some Ma and Pa League by the, the high school coach or the grammar school coach, your kid is not going to get the exposure that mm. they need. You got to put your kids out there where they're going to be seen by the right people. That yeah. is very, very important. So. Don't have y'all kids on the team scoring 30 and 40. In the, gotta, in the bum league. <laughs> in the bum league, yeah. 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 You can start there. You got to start somewhere. Namari yeah. started there. But in yeah. order for your kid to get the maximum exposure, um, they must be where the bright lights are. And I can't say too much about um, Nike EYBL. That's one of the best of the best. Um, but Adidas and, and Under Armour are not too far short from that. So yeah. Keep in mind, moms and dads, your kids needs to be in basketball programs that has a presence. Did you hear that last part? I did. I did. Be in basketball programs that have a presence and don't don't run from competition. Yep. <laughs>
don't run from competition. Don't say, oh, I don't want my kid on the team with Jalen Green. No, he going to get better. He going to get exposure playing with Jalen Green. He going to get better exposure playing with some of the best. In order to be the best, you got to roll with the best. That's always been my motto. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Please tell my boy, Namari, tell B, I said, what's up? And good luck this season. And please, everybody, go follow Nikki and support anything that she's doing. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Have a good right. weekend. You too now. Okay.